I'm delighted to be in your city, delighted to be in, in your country. And, and as Mr. Singh suggested, I would very much like this to be a two-way conversation. So I, the organization I work with, the uh, Council on Foreign Relations, is a prominent American research organization and think tank that is based in New York City, but we also have a significant presence in Washington. And so among other things, what we do is research and policy advice for the US Congress and the US administration. And the two areas that are the primary focus of my research are US immigration policy and US trade policy. And as I will uh, explain to you in my talk, these are both very interesting and lively areas in the United States right now, and ones I think with great relevance to India. Um, it was mentioned that I, that I was involved in a couple of reports in the council, and I will, I will pass these around to you. So in, in 2009, I worked with a very distinguished committee that was co-chaired by the former Florida governor, Jeb Bush, who some of you may know uh, is the brother of the former president, George W. Bush, uh, is sometimes talked about as a future Republican candidate for president, though we, we don't know. Uh, he was the co-chair along with uh, Thomas McClarty, who was President Bill Clinton's first White House Chief of Staff. And uh, my job was the, the project director, which was I had to work with this committee of distinguished individuals and come up with a set of recommendations for reform on U.S. immigration policy. And the result was this report, which I'll, I'll pass around and, and allow you to, uh, to take a look at. It's available on our website uh, at the Council on Foreign Relations. Um, and similarly, in 2011, I worked on a similar project uh, that, as Mr. Singh mentioned, was, was chaired by Andrew Card and, and Tom Daschle, who was the the Democratic leader in our Senate, very uh, important political figure. So after he had just retired, he, he agreed to serve on this uh, committee. And we came up, again, similarly with a set of recommendations to the government on, uh, on U.S. trade policy. Uh, and I will pass this around in, in the other direction. Again, this is also available on our website. So I, I would like to, but I probably can't take credit for the fact that in the, the second term of President Obama's administration, these two issues, immigration policy and trade policy, are at the center of the president's agenda. And indeed are the issues where he has the greatest chance of making progress with our Congress, which, as you may know, is a very contentious place, uh, not unlike your Congress, very difficult to, to, get, things, uh, to get things done. So on immigration policy, our Congress right now is considering legislation that would be the most significant overhaul of U.S. immigration laws since 1965. It would profoundly change the rules for U.S. immigration policy in some ways that will very much benefit India and potentially in some other ways that could be a concern, and, and I want to talk with you a little bit about those as well. So just very brief historical background. Historically, U.S. immigration policy was not largely about its economy. So the United States admits a lot of immigrants. There are about a million people who move and settle legally in the United States every year. And that number, just to put that in context, is four times as many immigrants, or excuse me, is as many immigrants as the next four largest immigrant receiving countries combined. So you have the United States in first place, and then if you add up the next four, that's about a million people that those countries admit, about as many as the United States. So the United States takes in a lot of immigrants. Um, historically, most of those were from Europe. But as a result of the 1965 law, the United States really opened itself to immigration from all over the world. And so now the majority of our immigrants come from Latin America and they come from Asia. But in the past, the primary concern was that those who come to the United States will be able to integrate 
and assimilate successfully into our society. Uh, and in order to encourage that, we wanted people to come over and often bring their extended families with them. So their elderly parents, uh, their brothers and sisters, if they're older, their adult children. So most immigration to the United States is what we call family-based immigration. So people come because they already have family in the United States. It was much less concern compared with a country like Australia, which many of you may know, or a country like Canada, which I know well. I, I spent uh, many years there and also do some work with, with the Canadian government. Those countries are very focused on the economic benefits brought by immigrants to their countries. And so most immigration to those countries is selecting people who have skills needed by those economies.